We've covered Shonen already, so it's time for some shoujo. And you can't get more shoujo than Sailor Moon. Created by artist Nyako Takeuchi in the pages of Nakayoshi Magazine, this franchise has pierced America's pop culture in a way only a select few series have. Ask a random person to name some anime shows, they might list DBZ or Pokemon, maybe even Speed Racer, but they'll definitely say Sailor Moon. However, how well do they really know this heroine? More importantly, how well do you? If you've ever watched an episode of this anime, you already know it follows a clumsy teenager, Serena and her friends, protecting the world from evil as their super-powered alter egos, Sailor Moon and the Sailor Scouts. But here are seven things you didn't know about Sailor Moon. Yeah, probably. Sailor Moon was not originally a part of what eventually became her story. At the start, Takeuchi did a one-shot story, codenamed Sailor V. It was about a teenager, Minako, who transforms into a superheroine, and she's appointed Sailor Venus by Artemis, a talking cat with a crescent moon on its head. When Toya Animation expressed interest in developing this into a show, Takeuchi tweaked the concept. Sailor Venus and her cat Artemis were downgraded to supporting roles as members of a team of warriors, and the spotlight swung to Sailor Moon and her cat, Luna. While the revamped Sailor Moon series would debut within seven months of codename Sailor V's publishing, Takeuchi still intermittently continued the Sailor V manga. The two are somewhat compatible, either as loose sequels or separate companion pieces. I'm the one and only Sailor Moon, and I despise your evil way! <sighs> If you were introduced to Sailor Moon by the American dub in the 90s, you might have been a bit confused about the relationship between Sailor's Neptune and Uranus. The loving looks, the hand touching, all of it seemed more than a little romantic, even for very close cousins. Well, that's because the two were originally written as a lesbian couple. In fact, the Japanese actresses who played the characters were instructed to play them as married spouses. While this was one of many drastic changes made to the characters for American TV, it's an especially awkward reinterpretation, since the scout's physical affection is clearly on screen, despite the frequent in-bed innuendos being cut from the dialogue. We're cousins. We grew up together. Huh? Those two weren't the only characters whose sexuality was censored either. Season 1's villainous Zoocyte and Malicite were male lovers in the original Japanese version, but American audiences saw Zoocyte changed into a female character. In fact, by the time the show reached its final season, the strong transgender and transsexual themes surrounding three new characters were too central to the plot for American producers to even edit around them. So that season didn't air. And because it wasn't translated, the licensing rights reverted to Japan. Call it fate or karma, maybe even kismet, but this eventually led to a more faithful translation coming stateside. Gay, straight, or trans, the American dub didn't make much room for sexuality. When the scouts transformed, their curves were removed to erase any semblance of a female form, and in one notable case, the water level in Serena's bathtub was raised so as to hide more of her cleavage under the surface. Violence wound up on the cutting room floor also. Ray slapping Serena, Serena beating Melvin with a streamer, Serena's mom attacking her for getting a bad grade, all edited. One cut somehow got even more ridiculous than the one for Serena's bathing scene. In the Japanese version, our heroine is pushed from a balcony. In the American version, though, the frames are actually reversed, so it looks like Serena's being rescued instead. And in death? That was entirely removed from the English dub. Instead, when the scouts die, the dialogues change to say they've returned to the negaverse. Even a line where Jadeite says Miss Haruna will die soon is edited out. Not even an actual on-screen death, just a reference to a potential one. Sailor Moon's creator is married to Yoshihiro Togashi, the creator of hugely popular shonen series like Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter, among others. Though they've worked on only a few projects together, they're one of the biggest, if not the biggest, power couple in anime. Both have created series popular enough to be redone, retold, remade multiple times. Hunter x Hunter, for example, got a second full-length series in 2011 to restart its story and hew closer to the manga. And by the time it wrapped up, Sailor Moon got its own redux, Sailor Moon Crystal, with a fresh and sparkly makeover for the 2010s. Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. Sailor 
Takeuchi used her own life and experiences when creating parts of Sailor Moon. Most obviously, she used her own family as the model for Serena's family. What you may not know is that Takeuchi earned a degree in chemistry before going full-time as an artist. That explains why many Sailor Moon characters are named after minerals and gemstones. Jadeite, Nephrite, Big Bed, Queen Barrel, all named after minerals. This also might explain why Serena and Tuxedo Mask have such great chemistry. <clears throat> Alright, moving on. Before the highly successful run on Toonami, an earlier attempt at bringing Sailor Moon to the States was proposed in the 90s, and it took a bit more creative license than you might expect. This pilot from the company Toon Makers had Sailor Moon's high school life happening in live action, while her outer space superhero adventures were animated by an American studio. It wasn't picked up, and it was never formally released. If you're curious though, imagine a setup similar to the Power Rangers method of re-editing existing footage from Super Sentai shows and combining it with 90s American team actors. It was an idea that was just crazy enough to work, considering how popular Power Rangers was at the time. And if you're really curious, it doesn't take a lot of effort to find the video sales reel online, but good luck watching it without losing just a little bit of faith in humanity as a whole. While that attempt to reinterpret Sailor Moon in the 90s didn't work out, the Sailor Scouts have shown up in a wide variety of other media. In addition to the anime movies and TV specials, there have also been around 30 stage musicals, many of which have plots inspired by the anime. It's up for debate as to how loose their interpretations are. There were even several radio dramas based on the show, dubbed DJ Moon. If you're still craving a live-action version of the show, though, look for Toei Company's Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. Produced by the same outfit that made the Super Sentai show Power Rangers, it retells the original series' first story arc. Not without some changes, of course, liberties are taken with the plot and new characters are added, but hey, at least nobody ever morphs into cartoons. So now, between the various direct-to-video releases, CDs, companion books, stage shows, and video games, there's a whole plethora of material once you've barreled through all the animated versions of Sailor Moon. Moon Crystal Power! Make up! And those were seven things you probably didn't know about Sailor Moon. Would you Vicers list anything else? Which iteration of the Scouts' adventures do you like best? Crystal? The original manga? Maybe one of the musicals? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the other great videos right here on Anime Vice.